All right, what's up guys? Um, so I I decided to uh, speak through this video for the first time. I usually don't do any speaking during my videos. I guess I'm not very experienced with talking during my how-tos or the processes that I do. But this video will be about putting 8 gauge wire on lithium polymer batteries. Uh, in this video I have two 5000 CNHL 70C. Um, I personally think that the CNHL 70C uh, battery lineup, especially if you look at the MAH values, um, I think they're the same exact cells that go into Turnigy Panther graphenes, the uh, black and green um, LiPos. Like the, um, they have 6000s. Until I started running parallels, I didn't really mess with 5000s. I always had 6000s, like this one. This is a 70C. Um, CNHL LiPo and when you weigh it the, it's kind of on the heavy side of things as far as the MAH is concerned but I think that's kind of what gives it a the high current capability if you notice like, there's a lot of batteries out there that are 9500 8000 MAH but they weigh less and considering if you're comparing the 4S lineup of say SMC's versus um, what are some other brands Anyways, basically, if you check the, uh, if the MAH is low, but the weight of the battery for the MAH is high, I usually think that those batteries are the ones that you get speed running capability out of, where the voltage doesn't sag too much. Um, and that's kind of why I leave my data logs in videos, just for mainly my own reference, because I do forget which numbers are what after a couple months. But yeah, so out of the factory, these CNHL 5000s do come with 8 gauge wire, but after my first experience with running four of these, just right out of the factory like this, all I did was put eight, eight millimeter bullets on and I put it in my car. After hitting the throttle, it desoldered one of the wires right off of the cell. And ironically, it was the only set of batteries that I just took out of the box and ran for speed running. Normally I always do 8 gauge wire myself with all of my batteries that come in. I'm not saying that you have to, but I personally have never seen a good solder job with 10 gauge or 8 gauge, especially with CNHL. Um, the Turingies usually are fine. I guess they're a little bit higher quality um, soldering jobs out of the factory, but I mean the CNHLs are cheap, so I'm not saying you get what you pay for, but I don't really trust out of factory um, solder jobs. So today we are going to be soldering, we're basically going to be making two of these lipos into this uh, finished product. This is a Castle 8 gauge wire with Castle 8 millimeter bullets. I think that's a pretty high power setup and I've never had these solder jobs fail. And one thing to add before I start doing stuff, um, I've had these in the freezer for about two hours. This time I'm going to do something special and I'm going to take it apart, I'm going to unsolder the, the wire and I'm going to put it back in the freezer for another 10-20 minutes um, just to make sure that the cells are in good working condition. I did want to also go over the supplies I'm going to be using. So I have here black and red Castle 8 gauge wire. Um, they're pretty flexible and I assume the copper is a little bit higher quality than the... Uh, I used to get like an unbrand don't have any with me right now but basically it's, I think it's they've got exact same cable brand that CNHL puts on their um, uh, lipos out of the factory so and, and it's a bit thinner too if you notice these are this is 8 gauge yeah, let me take this piece out alright so this is 8 gauge castle wire and this is the out of factory I would, I'm just going to call it unbrand 8 gauge. You can see that there's a significant thickness reduction with the 8 gauge, and I think that helps it flex pretty good. But um, and it is a bit lighter, and it's obviously it's still the same amount of copper on the inside. It's just there's a lot more rubber covering it. Um, and let's move on to heat shrink. So you don't have to use this brand specifically, but I use 12.7 millimeter um, heat shrink. This is the uh, red, just to be fancy, I'm going to use this on the positive side, and then this is the exact same heat shrink in black for the negative side.
Okay, so I did want to show this in non-time lapse mode. This is right out of the factory, and as you can see, these are extremely oxidized for whatever reason. Um, and they, they did actually cover a decent surface with the solder. The ones that had that broke on me, the soldering job was like barely contacting the actual ends of the, the cell. Um, and I did also want to note with the having to freeze the cells, they do warm up pretty quick. They don't have much mass. Um, so they don't hold much heat or stay cold too much. Um, so this is all time sensitive and that's not helping me trying to explain it verbally. Um, it is already a stressful uh, job. But so I have, I've had the uh, soldering iron heating for quite a long time. You don't need anything special. Um, I don't know where I put it, but basically instead of having a soldering station, I would highly suggest using a big iron like this. This is an 80 watt uh, Weller iron. And in fact, if you go even higher, that's even better because um, it holds a lot of heat on it. So if you have it heating for 10, 15 minutes, it'll solder high gauge stuff pretty easily. And for this one, we want to be very, very quick about unsoldering this, on unsoldering the uh, connections. Normally, I'll just unsolder it. I'll have wires prepped and I'll, I'll solder new wires on at the same time. But um, to do it a bit better, I'm going to unsolder these right now. I'm going to put them back in the freezer and then I'll be making wires that are going to be replacing these. Alright, so we are at the point where we have our wires. I just brought these back from the freezer. Um, we have our wires and we're going to be soldering right onto the cell. So it's going to go like right like that. Um, it was part of the time lapse, but basically what you want to do, it it's kind of tricky, but you want to tin this pretty quick so that it's still flexible. Normally I mess this up and I, I tin it for too long and the, the solder creeps into the rubber and then it, it like it'll bend only from this section so you'll have like a non-flexible um, wire which I have a great example of an awful soldering job these were these are three thousands for my Revo and as you can see I really held that solder on for too long and now it goes all the way up here which you do want a flexible wire you don't want this to happen uh, they look like they might explode they're pretty awful um but they do work anyways so what we're gonna do I do want to cut this short so I can get these this soldered before they warm up too much um, the main reason this is kind of a, a time sensitive job is that the thing we're soldering to actually goes into the cell so if you hold the solder on for too long you'll start burning the ends of the solder, or I mean the ends of the lipo, and you'll notice when you start charging, like these charges are pretty good, but you'll start charging and you'll notice the internal resistances, if you mess it up, will be bad for the first and last cell. These are 4S, so you, that'll be cell 1 and 4. Um, and I will be charging this once I finish it up, so let's get the solder done. Yeah. 
All right, so we are finally done soldering. Um, the time lapse allows me to not show how stressful that is, but um, we have a much better connection. It, it's these don't end up looking beautiful. I mean, if you were trying to make it look beautiful, you would probably burn the cell. Um, but as you can see, there's actually pretty good contact, and the cell t the cell tabs, the ends of them. They don't fully fully solder like you can't really tin them very well but um this is the uh best soldering job that i've done so far for direct cell connection um so at this point we're going to be putting the the wrapping back on we're going to be heat shrinking the connectors and i'm hoping this 150 millimeter heat shrink should um cover the 5000s because i do have 130 but I don't remember if I did these 5000s with 130 or 150 we'll find out <laughs> pretty well wires are pretty flexible so the next step would be um, charging them I'm currently discharging and putting in storage mode into these batteries so I won't have readings just yet but um, I'll add that to the video when I do the charging all right so they fully charged right now um, I think they were at like 80 82 percent when I first started 100% and obviously the uh, MAHN is different because they weren't both identical when I first started charging. Um, so the main main important thing is, at least for these Revo Electric GT500s, it'll usually show you a rating between 2 and 1, uh, I think that's milliohm of resistance per cell. So these both are showing that I didn't burn the beginning and end cells on either one so that is a pretty good sign um, and each each battery is different so when you do a full charge after a couple minutes they will uh, trickle down a tiny bit or stay the same but these batteries are a success and we'll figure out if they were worth the, the effort once I do a speed run